I'm your host, Michael Dennis, joined by the awesome and amazing Elena Van Hall. How's it going, Elena? Good, Michael. Doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Did you have a good Labor Day? I, I did. It was fantastic. Very relaxing. Just chilled with the puppy. My boyfriend went on a last minute fun vacation to Vietnam this weekend. <laughs> so I'm just... Where, you know where everyone goes for fun. <laughs> yeah. I was like, really? You're going to go all the way across the world for... Okay, cool. No, but I'm excited for him. How was your weekend getting married? Yeah, I got married last weekend in, <laughs> in Las Vegas. That was interesting. Yeah. I've never been married before. I first go, time? Yeah, this, that was my first time. <laughs> It'll be my only time, too. I'm never doing this again. <laughs> no? Was it just... I'm sure it was just an amazing day, and now you're officially a husband. Spoken for. And, uh, yeah, the rest of your life is yeah, it's ahead of it's you. It's all so. done. It's yeah. all written. <laughs> it's very exciting. Well, yeah. congratulations. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be back. Um, with it being after Labor Day, I always get that feeling of we're back in school. Yeah. The weather's changing, mm-hmm. everything. Yeah, totally. It's, it's officially fall. So to officially kick off fall, we're going to do part two of our politics and social media podcast. If you guys remember back in part one, we broke down the numbers and the the statistics behind users on Facebook, how on the whole people are using it less. Um, They're not just using it less frequently. Some of them are leaving the platform altogether. It is also a place, uh, Facebook, where the people that have been leaving have been leaving because of political reasons and the conversation that goes on there. But those that have been staying have been staying for the political conversations. So today we're going to break down where did these users go? Are they on a different social media platform? And if so, how can we follow them and as marketers still get our message out in front of them? We're going to start off by looking at Instagram. Instagram users who admitted to using the platform on a daily basis grew from 49 to 62% from July of 2016 to January 2017. And also during that time period, those that use the platform weekly jumped from 25% to 32%. So, wow. so during the same exact time that we're seeing a 10% drop off in users on Facebook, we are seeing an, a 13% jump in daily users on Instagram and a s- almost 10% jump in weekly users. Oh, wow. So we know exactly where they're going. Yes, to the platform <laughs> to the platform where it's harder to type out a paragraph. <laughs> right. It's more picture friendly. It's yes. Not, it's not a political game because it's hard to do politics in pictures. Very true my my own i almost called her my fiance but my wife just uh, a little while ago uh, i was kind of hanging over her shoulder and she was playing on her phone and she said something about i never check facebook anymore because i like instagram it's not negative and there's just happy stuff on it right there's just puppies and food yeah puppies and food and i'm much more selective with it because facebook i got when i was young and so everybody and their mom is my friend and on literally instagram, their mom yeah <laughs> instagram it's just like my favorite people that i want to see on a daily basis yeah totally Absolutely. So we see a giant jump uh, across the board for Instagram. Heading over to Snapchat, that's, even though the the platform has stalled a little bit in its growth in 2017, it it grew significantly during that same July 2016 to January 2017 time period. It went from 43 million daily users to 158 million daily users. So they had a 15 million during that time period. 50. 15. Oh, 15. One okay. five. Okay, got it. 143 to 158. Okay. Wow. So right off the bat, we're starting to see these people are going there more. It's more active on these new platforms. And I think that's the message for marketers is that we have to be flexible. We have to be willing to follow mm-hmm. these people. And when you're sitting down and making your content calendar, if you're looking at your demographics and you're starting to see your numbers go down on Facebook, and your organic reach go down and your engagements go down, I think now is the time to start beginning to look at other platforms, mm-hmm. m- most specifically Instagram and possibly Snapchat. Mm-hmm. I know there are a couple others on the market. There's Minds that just opened up a little while ago and, Ga- and Gab. My, Minds, if you go to it, it looks like, it almost looks like Pinterest, but with Twitter stuff. Okay. And then Gab is a new kind of Twitter that emerged in the last couple of months. But those don't really have uh, a big following yet. Okay. If I were a brand out there, I would highly recommend just going and get it and getting your handle for those platforms, just in case it is something in the future that you want to use. Mm-hmm. I went for through sure. uh, I went through and did that for our clients. Mm-hmm. We have them just sitting there in case we ever need to go on these platforms. Nice. So I highly nice. recommend everyone out there if if you plan on being in the digital and social game for a long period of time, 
Facebook may not be the place where your audience is or will always be. Go out there and get those handles right now for these other platforms. And what were they again for everybody? Gab, G-A-B, and then minds.com. I will provide links in the about section. Cool, cool, cool. So if you're going to stay on Facebook, another topic, another, another trick, and this isn't just for Facebook, but this also works for any social media platforms. If you want to get a little bit more out of your content, start posting during off hours. Why do you think that is? Because the middle of the day is when we're supposed you know, to be working. <laughs> we're supposed to be working, but people are admitting that they're on social media mm -hmm. and they're following politics and they're engaged in stuff. And the conversation that happens from nine to five is normally just so heavy okay. on these platforms. So putting it out in the middle of the day, you're going to get gobbled up. So I highly recommend posting very early in the morning, possibly during the commute when people have some time to kill or they have their phone in their hands. Um, then also at the very end of the day for that same reason, people are commuting home, they've got some, they've got some time. And then also uh, later on in the evening, 8, 9, uh, 10 p.m. in some cases. Um, 10 p.m. especially if you're on the East Coast, then you'll really start to get on, on the West Coast at like 7. So think a little bit outside the box in terms of when you want to post mm -hmm. so you can have a better opportunity to not get swallowed up in all of the conversations that are happening on Facebook especially right now. Good, Good advice for sure. What else can brands be doing? I mean, with the political climate so heavy, like how should brands be acting on these platforms? I think that comes down to what are the priorities of each company. So if you are a company that, that wants to be political, then mm -hmm. I, I guess, I guess what, I, what I'm trying to say is either don't jump into the pool or stay out of the pool. Mm -hmm either hop in or stay on the side you, you, you can't you can't go one foot in the water or mm -hmm. one toe in the water you can't jump in then jump out no right you really have to commit yourself that you know this is our belief structure this is what we are going to do mm -hmm. backlash or boycotts be darned mm -hmm. and commit to it mm -hmm. or stay out of it completely you know mm -hmm. apple apple nike coke they've all remained apolitical mm -hmm. and and yeah. they, you know, they aren't facing backlash. Nobody, no, so, so far, no one's posting? coming after Nike. So like, like, and I think you said this earlier, but they're they're being fun. They're making social media fun again, and it's not getting into that political climate. But it's really being true to who this company is and being who those who the customers want to see. Mm -hmm. And it's when you get on social media, you're not looking for an argument unless you're one of those very few people that like that. You're looking for something that's fun and entertaining and really speaks to you. So brands should be true to themselves in that way. I think there's something to be said for producing content that your target audience will enjoy seeing. Mm -hmm. And if we're in the middle of this social media desert where there's so much negativity and the conversation has turned you know, so hostile on your newsfeed to then get an uplifting message every day from Nike about mm -hmm. you know staying strong and keep moving forward mm -hmm. or Coca-Cola reminding you to have a great time with your friends this weekend. Mm -hmm. That imagery and that, that messaging is maybe even going to be even more powerful in a world where everything has almost got this doom and gloom feel to it. Mm -hmm. So as kind of a recap from part one, co consumers are moving off of Facebook and they're moving to Instagram. Yes. And in droves, they're moving to Snapchat. They're potentially moving to the new platforms, mm -hmm. TBD. And brands shouldn't be political they, if that's who they are. If they, and the most successful brands that we have seen have stayed apolitical and that's what we would highly recommend yes and they're making it fun they're making it enjoyable and they're truly um speaking to the core of why these companies exist and 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 customers are loving it consumers are really enjoying the conversation yes yeah. absolutely elena i couldn't put it any better myself that was fantastic and i can't think of a higher note to end on so for elena van hall i'm michael dennis uh, this is the chicago marketing podcast uh, brought to you every week by mignani continuum marketing mag n-a-n-i dot com for all of your digital and marketing needs here in Chicago. So for all of us, thank you so much and have a great day.